guys, so this is what if Deku was in a Xenomorph invasion. Now, this is a what if. Uh, I just got the idea for it, actually. Because I'm rather what if for, um, basically. Because I looked over some of my old what ifs. What if Deku was in the zombie apocalypse? Or also, what if Deku was in the Sweet Homes? When Sweet Home was a thing with the, you know, the Japanese or the, yeah, the Japanese Netflix TV show. Basically, I did that what if. But enough of that. So, this is what if Deku was in a Xenomorph invasion. Now, this is a little bit different. And also, it's going to be a lot more plot in this, actually. And it's actually going to be real thought through. It's kind of going to be, like, maybe just an alien version of Walking Dead, a bit of simple. So, basically, Deku will have drama. He'll have conflicts with separate My Hero Academia characters and even kill some of them. And he will also find his true self within this whole apocalypse. And eventually, near the end, Deku may find a way to kill the Xenomorphs. But that may not that may not happen so you guys go in the comments and decide the fate of the ending of this what if because i'm going to end it in at least five to six parts so about maybe the fourth or the third or fourth episode or parts i'm going to have them at least like an hour long so i can fit a lot of juicy bits in there but also yeah so let's just dive right into the video now we start our story off with how xenomorphs are you know pretty much Perceived in this universe or in this world. As we start our story off, or our real story, the what if with Izuku Midoriya. As Izuku Midoriya in this story would have been exactly the same, nothing really changing too much. As Deku, as Izuku Midoriya would have been in the classroom doing this event, as the day, the last day of school to him would have been the beginning of the rest of. Well, the rest of the 10 month arc training, the rest of his break. As Deku would have been sitting in the class, as this whole story from Deku's birth as quirks in this world, everything would have still stayed, stayed the same. As everything would have happened exactly the same. As during this time, since the pretty much well, evolution of quirks in the world, during this time, well, the, tech, the technical or science field, basically space travel would have been cracked in a matter of a couple years after Quirks would have made their debut in society as it would become norm. As we get switched about, the, the main canon of the story would have happened about, about like, uh, 50 years before the original canon. So, beginning of original canon, that's when space travel would have became a big thing. As space travel became a normal thing as things would have happened and pretty much humans would have explored everything in the Milky Way galaxy but never streaming out of their galaxy until something would have, something strange would have happened as they would send their first aircraft out of the Milky Way galaxy to another planet to another planet so they would have landed on that planet as they would have gained as they would have gotten some sort of well alien sample so they would have grabbed the alien sample flying back to earth as we will get switched to Deku and in canon time or right now as that would have been about a, about three days ago as Deku would have been sitting in class the class would have been talked to basically by the teacher asking who do they want to be in the future now it would be about three main pretty much categories you can be in this life, in this world a pro hero pro heroes would still be a big thing that they're not really going away either a space explorer or somewhat of a just a normal average joe working a five to seven job or a five to nine job as they could be sitting in class being bored of this as in this canon they would still be that would still be born without a quirk as it would be different this time that would be in a high-end school as public schools would be a lot more educational or basically well evolved as technology would be on their peak as it would be holograms and all sorts of different stuff. Flying cars in this world would also be a thing as well. They wouldn't be able to fly high into the ground, but they would be able to levitate. So flying cars wouldn't be a thing, but levitating cars would be. As Deku would have been sitting in class, as the teacher would have told them that that pretty much I all know you want to be heroes. As Deku would have been sitting out in class, as he would have looked at his wristband, basically it beeping. As he would have asked the teacher, or pretty much well the yeah, the teacher, as he would have walked out of class to take his shot. As his shot would have been, well, he would have been told it was an insulin shot, but 
For Deku, it would be a secret, a more complex thing, as his fa father and mother would have told him to always take the shot at least two hours between each day. As Deku would have been very confused, him just being told that was for insulin as he would be as he would be told that he was born with diabetes. As Deku would go along life basically pitting this unknown substance in his well stomach as he wouldn't even know what, what it was. Him just trusting the word of his parents. As he would have walked back in class, as the class would have been literally their eyes stuck to the to the hallway pretty much well windows as the class would have been open. As Deku would have looked around as he would see that something landed in the middle of in the middle of the city, as they would have had a clear view of it. As out of nowhere, pretty much it would be a t it would be a TV in the classroom, but it would be more educational, like hologram TV. Basically, it having a all around pretty much alarm system for the city of Japan, basically telling the class that it's been a wide world evacuation. As out of nowhere, they start to hear hear yelling. As they start to look around as pretty much the school would have been about a mile away from a nearby testing, testing facility and also Space Explorer, pretty much, well, research lab. As Deku would have looked around, as they would have heard screaming, yelling, people yelling for their lives, a massacre happening. As they would have been a couple blocks away from the center of town, or the center of the city, as they would have started to freak out, as they would have been told to evacuate the city as fast as possible. As they would start to run around, as they would get hit with different, as the whole world be hit with different radio calls, pretty much world spread news, and everything would have been going crazy as they would say to evacuate your near cities. As everywhere in the world would be told to evacuate, but everywhere in the world being touched by this unknown enemy. As, as hours would have gone by, as Deku would have been sitting in his house and basically freaking out, as everywhere else would have been told to evacuate, meaning that they were stuck because every other country, town, city, and even pretty much building everywhere was told to evacuate. And since they were evacuated from every other place and also from Japan, they had no well wait they had no place to go. As the only safe place in the world that wasn't touched by this unknown enemy was the North Pole and the South Pole. As Deku would have been pretty much Thinking about this as he would have been freaking out, as his mom would have comforted him, telling him to just calm down, as his father would have been a scientist at the re at the research facility that this all happened or all spread to. As Deku's father would have told him that he had to go, as he would be back as fast as possible, as he would have booked it out of the house, as he would have taken his keys, it also slid pretty much a whole would have put a handgun in his back pocket, him knowing that something was going down, him knowing what was happening. But not telling Deku. As he would have walked out, as Deku would have told his mom that I'm scared, and basically his mom saying I'm here. Basically, us getting switched about five hours later. As Deku would have been sleeping at this point, as he would hear a big noise in the front of the door. As he would have looked through the peephole, as he would have seen some sort of black tail pass by the peephole. As he would have been confused on what he looked at or what he caught a glimpse of. As he would have been curious about to open the door, as his mother would have told him to save, step away from the door. As his mother for the past 15 minutes would have heard this thumping as Deku would have just woken up. As his mother would have had a shotgun in her hand. She would have told Deku to pack back up. As Deku would be confused as he would back up as his mom would stare towards the door. And in this universe, or in this timeline, Inka would be at pretty much, oh is it, uh, her peak or she would be in good shape basically. She would be like her young version of herself. So Inka would have been staring at the door, clocking the shotgun ready to shoot. As the door would have hit would have been hitting with bams over and over some something trying to get in. As it would have hit the door over and over and over and over and over until a gunshot would have gone off. Not by Izu not by Izuka's mother, by his father. As his father would have shown up, his father would have opened the door as he would have been missing an arm. As his father's arm would have been replaced with some sort of robotic arm and very quickly and very well messingly stitched or pretty much well mechanically put on to his shoulder or his stump where his arm was somehow it looked like it was burned off by some sort of liquid as Deku's father would have told Deku and his mother to leave and we have to go now so he would have ran off so he would eventually 
to get into the middle of the street as Deku's mother would have boarded up the windows, as Deku for the first time in the last 5 hours would have seen the outside world, seen fire, and seeing cars flipped over, and people yelling out in the distance, and dead bodies everywhere, looking like their organs were ripped out, and some of them even looking like they were stabbed through, and also some tiny little bite, bite holes through most of their faces as it would look like some sort of tiny animal or creature pierced to their chest. Also, most of them having guns and knives in their hands, but going out in a fight, but also seeing that it was some sort of, well, acid on their blood, on their shirt, as they would have lost the fight to whatever was trying to kill Deku. As Deku would see a glimpse of one of the xenomorphs as Deku's father would have shot one of them in the head. And also, Deku's father would have started to walk her out. As, they would, as Deku, his parents were started to pretty much, well, look around trying to get across the city as he would eventually come across an evacuation bus. As he would have ran towards there being, you know, filled with hope as Deku would have looked at the evacuation bus but would have sensed something wrong. As he, first time in his life, he would feel something different, something of presence. As he would have heard, well, something of a distorted voice clicking. As he would have looked up, as he would see a xenomorph jump out of nowhere about six or five of them, basically jumping into the evacuation bus and slaughtering everybody. As Deku's father and mother and also him would have stopped dead in their tracks and they would have booked it back at the house or back to the apartment. As they would have been surrounded by other xenomorphs as at least two of them would have been in front of the doors or inside the buildings as they would have been a lot more, well, intelligent in this version as they would have been acting kind of like raptors, them traveling in packs. As Deku would have backed up his mother and father would have told Deku to run now. If Deku would have said, I'm not leaving you guys. And Deku's father is saying, I love you, son, but you need to go. And we don't get, and we don't come back. You need to go to your grandparents' house. As Deku would have been confused, as Deku's grandfather, he wouldn't even know him. As Deku's father would have even, would have been, well, a scientist because his grandfather was a, well, let's just say a lone, well, deadbeat of a dad that was always stuck in his work as Deku's grandfather would have been a part of the first research team that would have gone to that other planet that would have began all this. As Deku would have looked at his father with fear in his eyes, his father would have told him to run now. As Deku would have booked it as he would have started to run crying his eyes out. As Deku's father and mother would have fought for their lives, eventually them dying, being eaten alive. Now we can switch to Deku running off into the alleyways as he would eventually bump into some sort of blonde haired girl. As this blonde haired girl would have been covered in blood, basically saying you need to get out of here out of nowhere, as Xenomorph would have came behind her, stabbing through her face. As Deku would be super, I mean, shocked with fear. As he would be standing there, sitting, well, he would be on the ground since he would have bumped onto his butt, as he would have bumped into the blonde haired girl. As he would have been on the ground, paralyzed in fear, not being able to move, as he would have started to, his heart starting to race as fast as possible, as his blood would start to well, as his blood pressure would have started to go crazy, as he would have started to pretty much freak out, as he would have forgot to take his insulin shots after doing this whole time, as he forgot to take his third insulin shot that day, as he would have started to freak out, as his eyes would have gone in the back of his head, as he would have passed out or whacked out, as he would have woken up on the top of a roof, him having a xenomorph head in his hands, as he would have dropped the xenomorph head down as he would be confused as he would see about six or seven xenomorphs on the roof as he would be slaughtered looking like some sort of human hands or ripped them apart kind of like a quirk did this as Deku would be super confused him looking around basically looking at his hands seeing that his clothes were slightly burned by the blood by the acid blood xenomorphs had but his skin wasn't phased at all as Deku would be confused and utterly freaking out as he would have said I'm Quirkless house as possible as he would have started to try to figure out what happened as he would have thought closer and harder as he would have seen glimpses of him passing out or him blacking out as he would see glimpses of him running around and killing and ripping apart xenomorphs like an animal as Deku would have seen that his skin was when he blacked out as he would have rushed by a car window as he would have seen that his skin was black he had bright and i mean bright white eyes as he would be rolled in the back of his head as his hair would be completely black as well his whole skin and his nails and everything would have been pitch black his eyes being you know just well 
plain white as it would have been in the back they would have been rolled in the back of his head his dick would also have grown or sprouted the tail as it would be a hole through his pants his dick would also have clawed feet where pretty much his nails and his toenails would have been claws as Deku would have looked around as Deku would be incredibly confused as he would look at the back of his body as he would see some sort of black well scales literally fade away from his skin as he would have been incredibly confused as he would have passed out again from near shock as Deku would have woken up hours later still on the same rooftop as he would have heard even more yelling and crying as he would have looked down near the roof as he would see well a oh, it was a pink haired girl with some sort of horns running down the pretty much street with a yellowed haired boy with also a purple haired girl as they would have started to sprint and book it down pretty much the alleyways or down the street as about six xenomorphs six xenomorphs would have been chasing them down as Deku would have looked at this him jumping to rooftop to rooftop, him just taking a leap of faith, as he would have started to notice that he had incredible speed and strength, as he would have started to jump across the rooftops like Spider-Man, as he would have had increased agility and speed and reflexes, as he would have been flipping or jumping to roof to rooftop without even breaking a sweat, as he would eventually jump down the roof, as he would have landed Superman style on top of one of the cars, as he would have crushed the car making a little indent of his feet and his body into the car. As he would have looked around being, like, well, extremely, pretty much, well, let's just say happy, not happy, but, well, uh, excited of his newfound power. As Deku's power would have came from, let's go into detail of Deku's lore and how he got this power. Now, I'm not going to go too into depth, but I'm just going to explain Deku's power. I'm going to explain his lore later on in the what if, because his what if is going to be like 30 to 40 minutes long. So, but it's kind of simple. Deku in his base form, th other than that other form he blacked out into later or pretty much earlier, Deku in his base form while he's conscious, he has pretty much increased speed and agility. And basically, to put simply, he just has super soldier serum type abilities and also has acid blood similar to the clone of i don't remember but the clone from one of the predator movies i mean one of the uh one of the alien movies where they were on the ship i don't remember but i'm pretty sure i'll put a picture up now deku's pop I, I, I think i remember um i'm sorry i think i remember alien species or alien uh real revolution or something like that i ain't been picture but it's the movie. It's the movie where Ripley Eight was in. Ripley Eight, aka the clone of Ripley, with the xenomorph DNA in it. So pretty simple. He has the same powers as Ripley Eight. He has increased agility, strength, and durability, and also acid blood, and also extra senses. And he is able to understand xenomorphs slightly, like you know, normal things like their direction or basically their, well, their intentions. So yeah, so stuff like that. So basically. And also, Deku can have, or pretty much, he does get a tie to pretty much some of the Xenomorphs. But basically, pretty simple, Deku, Deku basically has the same powers as Ripley 8. As Deku basically starts to dodge more of these Xenomorphs, as he will start to slow down the Xenomorphs. As the six Xenomorphs would have started to gang up on Deku, as they would have started to slice and dice on him. As Deku would have seen that he started to regenerate pretty fast, but not as fast as he, not as fast as his other form. As Deku would have started to very slowly heal from these cuts and stab wounds. As Deku would have started to fight against these xenomorphs. As one of the xenomorphs would have stabbed Deku in the chest. As Deku would have ripped the, uh, for instinct or somehow for instinct, just out of nowhere, like I guess muscle memory or program, basically foreshadowing. Now basically Deku would have ripped off one of the xenomorphs' tails as he would have pulled it out of his body as he would have started to use the tail as a weapon as he would have started to use it kind of like a spear in the predator movies or predator versus alien how the predator made a spear out of one of the aliens tails and gave it to the well uh lady or the lady that earned her place as a human predator now deku started to stab and cut away from the xenomorphs and eventually about 30 minutes would have passed and deku would have slaughtered all the xenomorphs deku would have thrown 
the spear down to the ground for his first time him going up against Xenomorphs without him being helped with, well, let's just say programming, foreshadowing. Basically, Deku would have been pretty impressed by his skills, but him still being scared and also not really understanding his full power. As Deku would have booked it, basically trying to find out where the other members were, as he would have catched on their scent. As Deku would also have increased senses as well, like hearing and smell. As Deku would have been running down the alleyways and the streets of Japan, as he would eventually find the group of teenagers as it would be near Deku Beach, hiding in a nearby pile of trash. As Deku Beach in this canyon wouldn't be picked up, so as it would be like a vault or some sort of well hidden place of trash pretty much piled over each other to make a type of fortress. As Deku would have walked over there, as Deku would have jumped down, as Deku would still be in his, you know, it would still be in his, what was it? I forgot, um, Deku would still be in his school uniform, just a little bit ripped up and the sleeves being pulled up or pretty much folded up to his uh, forearms or to pretty much his elbows. As Deku would have started to walk around, as he would have seen pretty much the group of kids basically in the fortress area as it would be actually a pretty spacious pile of trash inside at least as big as let's say your room right now if you if you're a kid or i guess 15 or 16 or something like that basically it would be as big as a normal like one bedroom apartment now basically deku would have looked around as it would be about let's say okay so the kids i described earlier it would be uh jiro or yeah jiro it would also be denki and mina and also an injured kirishima as kirishima would have been slightly injured as he would have cuts or wounds on his arms as pretty much he would have had or a xenomorph would have mold a nasty i mean like a whole like at least like two pounds of flesh off of kirishima's arm as he would have been able to harden his body halfway through the process so a chunk or two pounds of flesh and muscle were pulled off. It would still be some, uh, I guess, human flesh still on his bone, but it would be very, very thin. And meanly, he would be barely able to move his left arm. As Deku would have seen this, as he would have looked around, as they would be there basically trying to figure out a way or go to a hospital. But all the hospitals, since, you know, they're a big area for people to crowd up against, and also weak people and people that are disabled can't really run and save their lives so a lot of people were murdered and slaughtered in the hospitals alongside other school districts around the world that didn't evacuate so, and also children and well let's just say people like that sorry uh, my notifications are wrong so basically pretty much Deku would have just sat there as they would have told Deku about what happened in the last couple hours as they would have seen pretty much conspiracy theories on the internet surprisingly the internet still actually working for some reason as the you know pretty much well satellites and also communication was actually like surprisingly still be up as pretty much what would happen is Deku would have been very confused as Deku would have been saying how the communication stuff of the government isn't even here to save us as Deku would have been told that it's only been a couple of hours man and they probably are already on their way they're probably just you know, busy with everywhere else. As pretty much they would show a little bit of a recording of the voice or the messaging of the pretty much multiple presidents of every country. Basically them saying that, well, pretty much, or states. Basically, uh, pretty much, okay, so country or states. Basically, a lot of all the presidents would have been telling them that they were under attack by siege of an unknown enemy. As they would have hold them a little bit of rundown in xenomorphs as they would have said they're alien-like creatures that are able to run in extremely, at extremely fast speeds similar to superhuman animals and killing machines as they would have been basically uh, telling them that they had acid blood and also a extreme durability factor as they would also be able to reproduce by fleshy eggs to stay away from the eggs to keep your distance as they would also, as they also explain a couple other things, how you could take down xenomorph like fire or decapitation, or just shooting them in the head a lot of times without would waste a lot of bullets. So yeah, so basically what happened is doing that, and also all the presidents of the world was said, 
quirks are free range, no matter what age you are. It doesn't matter anymore, as everybody would have been mopit into doom, as pretty much the government would have tried at this point, would have been all over, like most of the government would have been dealt with. As most of the government would have been would have not been prepared for Xenomorphs. As 50% of my, of pro heroes, the other 50% of pro heroes, other than the popular ones, were most like or were most all dead. As most of the pro heroes in Japan were trying to save people, as they would have succeeded in saving at least like 200 to 500 people, 200 to 300 people. As a lot of other people that were in their buildings or just were attacked by Xenomorphs before the heroes showed up or even slaughtered or killed. As pretty much Deku would have stayed there as they would have explained everything to him. As they would also explain that they're going to ma basically make a plan to get out of Japan and to basically, well, get resources and get out of Japan, get resources and, you know, patch up his friend Kirishima and leave Japan to go to the North Pole because it's the only safe place on the world because Xenomorphs in this universe, or I guess, I think in original too, basically in this universe, Xenomorphs are extremely, that are extremely pretty much, well, let's just say they cannot stand the cold. Since technology would be a big thing, actually the North Pole and the South Pole, basically the Arctic plates, would have actually been refrozen at the peak because it would be no more you know pretty much wasteful energy as it would make sustainable energy in this universe because it would be a lot of tech and technology but it wouldn't really be a big they wouldn't really be able to compare with aliens because they would never be able to go begin they had never you know been able to or came across lethal or any aliens in that matter at all so pretty simple pretty much deku was told the plan as they would say that they were going to pick up a couple of their friends as they came in, they came in contact with them around Japan. Basically, them having a whole, well, team. As the, the next couple episodes will be about them going around Japan, finding other members of Class 1A, their future members of the Class 1A, or future students of Class 1A, and also coming across different characters as well. And also some made-up characters I might make along the way. And also them making a plan to get resources and also find a doctor for Kirishima and make their way out of Japan and basically try to figure out a way to survive as they would go down to North Pole or the South Pole. As the North Pole and the South Pole would have been the only places the Amores cannot follow you as they would have been extremely sensitive towards cold. Even Queen's Amores not really being able to take too much cold. As during this time, as we get to as we would see Deku's story, as we would get switched to Kirish, as we would get switched to Bakugo's story. As we would get switched to Bakugo, somewhere else on the other side of Japan. As Bakugo would have been basically at his house, as he would have been sitting there in his house, covered in blood, and sitting over his mother's dead corpse. As we would get a flashback a couple hours later, about the same time, like right before Deku's parents left the house, or Deku's mother, le Deku's father left the house, as we get switched to pretty much, well, uh, Deku, Bakugo's story. As Bakugo would have been in his house during this time, around the same exact time where Deku was, you know, about to get attacked by a xenomorph, as Deku's mother and father would have been scrambling around to get resources to try to evacuate Japan and go to the North Pole, as they would also have a radio knowing about this. Information about to leave as he would have been scared to the core, especially Bakugo. As Bakugo would have been told to get ready to go now as he would get packed up on his bags grabbing food and also supplies as well. And also grabbing a slight pocket knife and also an old timey, an old timey pretty much, what was it? A pocket knife type wrench, I guess, I don't really know what you call it. And also grabbing a machete he got from his grandfather because his grandfather was a big blade or military weapon buff so yeah as he would also open up a crate of live actual working grenades as his grandfather would have given given him this just underneath Bakugo's parents noses as he would have grabbed at least two of the grenades as the other ones would have been actually defective only two or about two or three of them working as he would have to set the rest of them on fire for them to actually work as Bakugo would just grab the whole case of them, as it would be in, 
as it would be in a briefcase. As Bakugo and their and pretty much his family was about to leave as they would have ditched the house as they were going down the street. As they would make the cruel and awful decision to take a car. Now basically as they would be driving down the street, as they would be about let's just say a mile away from the threshold to get out of Japan or about out of the city as they were about to you know pretty much get out of the city where most of the where most of the xenomorphs were gathered in as the xenomorphs would have been near the edge of the pretty much outskirts of Japan or the city as they would have been you know about to drive out as they would have been stopped by about three xenomorphs with two of them coming from the sides as one of them would have came from the front as they would have killed ki killed Bakugo's parents as they would have pit their pretty much tails throughout through the walls or through the doors of the car impaling pretty much Mitsuki Bakugo and also Bakugo's father as they would have instantly be stabbed through the chest but also through the head as well from the other xenomorphs stabbing them through the head as the first one in the front of the car near the no, pretty much. A uh, windshield would have used his hands to stab their chest, ripping out their chest. As they would have left the car, then walking off, as Bakugo would be still as a mouse, as he would have seen this. As Bakugo would have gotten re was situated about an hour later, as he would have gotten out of the car, as he would have gone into a nearby, pretty much, building or pretty much uh, secure, pretty much was uh, a nearby military place not military but a nearby walmart as he would have gone in there as he would have just well just camped there as he would have camped there for hours and hours and waiting there as he would eventually get tired of it as he would have started to look around grabbing gear and a bunch of other bull basically just grabbing everything he could to keep himself alive and also grabbing very sweaty or very hot clothing so he can sweat a lot so he would have a lot of fuel to use his cork as he would also grab a couple a couple other pocket knives and also hand knives and also a whole new machete that was very freshly well sharpened and also grabbing a whole ak-47 as he would have had them all loaded up him just having about two ak-47s strapped to the back of his you know pretty much vest he would be wearing the same outfit as this, basically, they simple. He will be wearing the same outfit as this, and basically would have made his way outside of pretty much the Walmart. As he would have started to walk off, as he would pretty much go into the city. As he would have had his AK-47 just strapped up, just ready to shoot. As he would have started to look around, as he would have gone pretty much all throughout the city. As he would have started to walk around aimlessly, trying to figure out a place a pretty much a area to pretty much find somewhere as he would have came across the broken down or pretty much ripped apart evacuation bus that was you know let's just say marked earlier on in the story by a couple of his xenomorphs that Deki witnessed as Bakugo would have looked around as he would have just passed by the bus as he would have seen Deku's parents dead as he would have assumed Deku was dead as well as he would have walked off as he would have said, I was bad. I was horrible to that nerd, but he didn't deserve to die. As Bakugo would have looked around, seen a couple other familiar faces in his class earlier that day, dead, stabbed, and also most of them halfway ripped alive, ripped, ripped apart alive. As he would have seen one of his classmates still alive, but them being the, them being basically the body from the well lower half. As one of his classmates, I think the kid with. The stretchy fingers. I just look it up. I, if you've seen episode one by Academia, I think the kid with the stretchy fingers that was in the class, basically, but the waist down, he was cut up. The waist down, his legs were cut off. I mean, like stabbed off or cut clean off by some sort of well xenomorph tail, as he would have been sitting there or laying down there, grasping onto life as Bakugo would have looked at his classmate's body as he would have seen his last breaths as he would have died there as Bakugo would have sat down there in a nearby alleyway as he would have been starting to break down and cry as he would have been prepared for this he wouldn't be prepared for this as he would have been he would not be built to be able to power through this as he's seen classmates members of his family and all sorts of other stuff 
and be murdered, dead, as he would have just sat there. Overall, him just being there, just overall, just, just defeated, as he would have heard screeching and clicking, or basically crawling a couple a couple feet away, as he would have looked across the alleyway or across the corner, as he would have seen two xenomorphs walk around, as he would have seen them basically sniff the dead corpses, and basically one of the xenomorphs would have sensed Bakugo, them running towards Bakugo's alleyway, as they would have looked in there, as they wouldn't as they would not see Bakugo. As Bakugo would have jumped in one of the trash bins or one of the trash cans, staying as still as possible, trying not to be catched or even sensed or smelled. As the Xenomorphs would have started to look around, as they would have, or not looked around, but they would start to try to find where that noise was. Because Bakugo did make a little bit of it, let's just say, a very hard breathing. So yeah, they started to look around for Bakugo. And basically, eventually, they left. As Bakugo would have left there, as he would have gotten out of the trash bin, him jumping out of the trash bin, but making a lot of noise, alerting the two, alerting the two, well, Xenomorphs that were about to walk away, about to turn a corner, but they would have ran back near the alleyway, cornering Bakugo, as if one of them would have launched towards Bakugo, as Bakugo would have thrown an explosion, obliterating the, pretty much, Xenomorph, it burning some acid on Bakugo's forearm, as Bakugo would have quickly taken a rag that he had on the back of his vest as it would have started to try to wipe it off as fast as possible as it would have started to burn through his skin eating through his skin as it would eventually be able to not completely eat through his skin to get all the way to the bone but would it be able to burn about let's say a, a solid like inch of skin off of his forearm as Bakugo would have thrown another explosion from the other hand towards one of the other xen other xenomorphs from the back and basically obliterating or blowing up the xenomorphs spine making it fall apart as he would have pretty much lunged behind a nearby trash can to try to block the you know pretty much this pretty much the uh ah the after effect of his thought of his explosion on xenomorphs and basically just blood the acid blood flied all over the place as it would have gone through the concrete walls and the brick walls and the concrete floor throughout the trash cans as some of the trash cans would have took some of the blows as one of the acid drops would have fell on Bakugo's leg as he would have quickly tried to pat it off. As, you know, a little bit of a, I guess, a lighter type a burn mark was on his leg. As he would have found a, well, a first aid kit near a ran down apartment building. As he would have opened it up, starting to strap his arm up or pretty much bandage his arm up trying to keep it sturdy enough to be able to function as he would have stopped the bleeding alongside well it was sutured the bleeding because it would be acid but it would also eat through his skin and he would pour the acid out of his body since the acid would make a little bit of a dip or pull on Bakugo's forearm so Bakugo would just stop the bleeding as fast as possible him being able to concentrate Hicks explosion enough to actually suture up the wound and literally burn his forearm shut or the wound in his forearm shut as he would have bandaged up his body him look even more like this as he would have more bandages on his arm and also bandaged on his on the strap of his pretty much clothing or his pretty much pants as he would have walked off him grabbing his guns being ready to go like just off that just ready to go as he would have walked down the streets and we would get switched away from his story as we get switched to the Todoroki family. The Todoroki family. As we get switched about the exact same time, where Bakugo and, you know, Deku's story began doing the apocalypse or the invasion, as we would get switched to, well, Todoroki family household. As Todoroki would have been sitting down in his room, basically just doing his homeschool thing, as he would have been told by his father to join them in the living room, as his father would have been watching the news and being called by pretty much the hero, pretty much the hero academy, or basically just you know the police in general, basically endeavor telling that his family, telling his family that he has to go, but deal with the situation. As they would have looked at the news, then being told the same information as the rest of the you know world on the radio. As they luckily they would have a radio as well, as they would have been told about xenomorphs and basically that they don't know, the government doesn't know or doesn't want to tell them where they came from and basically that 
well their killing machines, as they would have been told that the only safe place would be the North Pole or the South Pole. As Todoroki would have been watching this, as Todoroki would have been shocked by this, as Todoroki would have been sitting down, basically trying to figure out what was going on. Todoroki would be wearing an outfit similar to this, just for, you know, uh, imagination purposes, as Todoroki would have been walking around the house, boring up the windows, locking up the doors, and just overall finding supplies and stuff like that as they were trying to keep straight in, in terms of supplies. Now, as Fiyumi would have gotten ready, would have told Bob, would have told Todoroki to get ready, and basically them just grabbing, you know, nearby weapons as well, as also grabbing some pretty much very flexible well, clothing as they would have, you know, been prepared to run if they had to. And then also being acquainted by, you know, Todoroki's old, other older brother, as basically out of nowhere they would hear a knock on the door. As Todoroki would be confused, as he would have opened the door, basically if Yumi telling him, are you freaking stupid? Her pretty much grabbing a knife on the kitchen table, basically about to, you know, throw it like a freaking, like, pretty much ninja, basically prepared to go down with a fight. As Todoroki would have opened the door, him about to hit anybody or anything that was in front of the door with a big ice chunk, as he would have looked and he would see some sort of man with burn marks on his body with a black hair and very tall and would have looked similar to Todoroki's older brother as he would have looked at the man telling him why are you out here man did you see the news as Todoroki would have told him to get lost and to find somewhere safe to hide as Todoroki was about to close the door but the man would have, would have stopped the door him saying Maku Todoroki's full name his age and also a very vivid childhood memory he had that only his family could know as Todoroki would have been confused saying is, is that is that you Toya as he we would be introduced to Dobby aka Toya Todoroki now he would have said yes he's me brother as he would have backed up being very confused saying I thought, I thought you you're you're dead you're dead you ran away basically Fumi seeing this, as she would have been shocked, as Dabi would have walked into the house, him closing the door because he didn't want to, he didn't want a xenomorph running up on them, as he would have closed the door and locked it behind him, as he would have sat on the couch telling them that he came back because I heard the news and I seen the havoc on the streets. I had to come as fast as possible because, well, I still do care about you guys enough to try to save you guys. And to try to help you guys out. As he would have been told, Todoroki, where have you been all this time? Or he would have asked, where have you been all this time? As Toya would have had a flashback, or would have had a flashback of about hours ago, right? When the first Z Xenomorph attack happened, as he would have been in the middle, or pretty much the subway area in the middle of Japan. As he would have seen a Xenomorph kill somebody right in front of him. As he would have been cloaked, him being in plain sight. As he would have booked it as the rest, of, rest of everybody else would, as he would have seen the xenomorph really murder somebody, as he would leave or flee the scene with Toya, not Toya, but would have fleed the scene with a nearby other villain, as that villain would have also been murked by, well, a xenomorph, as Toya would have had to ditch the place, as he would think about his family, as he was pretty much hiding out in a nearby abandoned. A banded type train station area as he would have came to the Todoroki household. As Toy would have told them the whole thing about him, you know, becoming a villain or, you know, a, pretty much, yeah, becoming a villain and saying that, you know, since the world is coming to an end, Todoroki saying, it's not coming to an end, Toya, as he would have said, look outside, as he would have opened the blinds, as he would have looked out, seen fire brimstone and basically cars being flipped open basically like a whole apocalypse like just imagine an apocalypse you know anime road it just looked like carnage as he would have said that's that's the end of the world we are getting invaded by aliens Taroki Shoto we can't do this alone I need you again and you guys need me as out of nowhere not so would have came out of the pretty much bathroom as he would have seen all this 
Does not so would have seen Todoroki, would have seen Dobby, and she would have said, "Who's this dude?" As Dobby would have taken some bottle of water and would have would have been it on his hair, as he would have shown his white, blackish, his white, uh, pretty much reddish hair, or his pretty much bright white hair, as he would have looked at his brother, saying, "Hey." Basically, him saying, I recognize that white hair anyway. Anywhere. Toya? As he would have said, yes, got it right. Got it correct. Bingo. As he would have told pretty much well. To- he would have told uh, Sato or uh, Sato. Nato. Oh, ah, freak. I forgot his name. Natsu, I think. Yeah, Natsu. As he would have told him that he was here to help you guys to get out of Japan and to go to the North Pole. As pretty much, they would have a clear advantage because the Todoroki family has an ice and fire-based quirks. And fire and ice quirks are literally like the best way to kill a xenomorph. Fire and freezing them alive. That's like the best way to kill xenomorphs. So yeah. So Todoroki and Dabi would have talked a little bit more and Dabi would have been somewhat, because of the stress of the whole situation, would have been let back into the family. As they would also, you know, get ready, and they would have gotten some, you know, backpacks together as they would hit the road, all four of them hitting the road and basically leaving a note for their father if he came back because they knew that he was big, he was making a big risk or taking a big risk going out there as it was all happening. And the majority of pro heroes were being killed by Xenomorphs, being overwhelmed by their numbers. As he would have started to walk around, as he would take a, you know, pretty much a wanderless road down or near the outskirts of Japan, trying to leave Japan as well. As they would also pretty much try to take a pit stop near the area of the city where Endeavor was fighting it to see if their father was still alive. Even though, well, Todoroki hated his father. He was still his father. He still need to. He still needed to know if he was dead or alive. And Dobby was kind of distraught about this, but just said, "Why not?" As he would have equated his brothers and sister to this area. As he would have taken a little detour. As they would all be wearing backpacks and basically a uh, Todoroki wearing an outfit similar to this, as in the picture of the fan art. Todoroki would be wearing an outfit like this. He would also pretty much scruff up his hair similar to this as well. As he would also grab about uh, about two katanas and also a lot of stuff in his backpack like supplies and sleeping bags and stuff like that. As the journey on foot out of Japan or out of the town, not out of the town, but out of the city and out of Japan itself would take a days to weeks on foot to get out of Japan and out of the city. Now basically, Todoroki, Dabi, Fiumi, and Sato they would have, Nato, uh, Natsu, Natsu, I, I don't know, Natsu, basically they would have started to pretty much get ready to go. As they would have been walking for about hours and hours, they eventually stopped by a nearby pretty much gas station. As they would have gone in the gas station, lock up the windows, and basically just camp out there for that night because it would become dark. And they were about a block, they were about a mile away or about another two miles away. From the area they were going to check if their father was still alive. As they would have been sitting down there. As they would have been just, you know, pretty much sitting down there. As, Tur- as Dobby would have just been eating some of the snacks up in there. Just eating a Twinkie. And just chilling. As at night we would get switched off. Uh, pretty much outside of the 7-Eleven or gas station they were camping out on that night. As we see about two z- xenomorphs. But these xenomorphs would have been different changed new breeds as we would get switched to the xenomorphs as the xenomorphs would have been hybrids or breeds with gorillas as a bit of simple about a couple hours within the, Xen- the xenomorphs basically arriving on earth as not arriving on earth as they would be there for a long time until they broke out but we're not going to get into that lore right now as basically we could switch to well let's just get a little rundown so basically, if you play the Xenomorph or the Alien games, basically at the arcade with the gun, you know, the guns and stuff like that, basically, you know, showing you different versions of Xenomorphs, like merge with other animals, stuff like that, because there's like endless possibilities with Xenomorphs merging with any type of 
animal like uh pretty much cheetahs or tigers or even bear xenomorphs or snake xenomorphs stuff like that so basically pretty simple pretty much the these xenomorphs are merges or pretty much merges of gorillas as they would have been pretty much stalking around the pretty much uh stalking around the uh 7-eleven or pretty much the area as they would have been looking around as they would eventually see what we would see what we assume to be pretty much their prey as they would want oh no sorry i'm getting off i'm not even reading my script anymore okay so basically the xenomorphs would have started to circle around the gas station as it would have made ruckus and noise around the gas station alerting toya as toya would have been on duty at the rest of everybody else including shoto and natsu and fiyumi would have been asleep as toya would have gone out in the back as he would have looked around as he would have seen the gorilla xenomorph the first one as he would have charged towards pretty much uh toya as toya or dobby would have shoot a huge ball of flames disintegrating the pretty much xenomorph as a, Xen as a xenomorph behind him would have came up behind him punching him into a nearby trash can and basically almost knocking him out as toya would have gotten back up him shooting a fireball towards the xenomorph as the xenomorph would have dodged it surprisingly it grabbed it pretty much crawling and crawling outside the building and jumping on top of toya gorilla style trying to well kill him like it would as Toya would have jumped or tuck and rolled out of the way as Toya would have started to fight with the Xenomorph the Xenomorph grabbing Toya and about to snap his arm or rip him apart because you know gorillas are incredibly strong plus them having the strength of a Xenomorph that's just really really OP like an apex predator as he would have started to try to rip apart Toya I mean uh, rip apart uh yeah rip apart Toya I was gonna say Dobby but it's the same thing same person so they would have started to uh, pretty much the La the Xenomorph would have tried to rip off Toya's arm as Toya pretty much his bone would have been dislocated and his muscle and his bones or pretty much his flesh was about to get ripped off as out of nowhere Shoto would have stepped in clutch or came in clutch freezing the pretty much uh, freezing the Xenomorph still or solid by a small miniature type fridge sized uh, block of ice basically him freezing the Xenomorph as he would have you know, broke the Xenomorph's le feet or pretty much legs off of arms, sorry. Uh, I printed out my script and for some reason before I, I, you know, I looked over, I didn't look over it, but I printed it out and it had a typo. So basically, yeah, so Xenomorph was taken down and pretty much you see that Shoto and, you know, pretty much Toya. Go back into the house. Go back into the area as Shoto tells Toya, "Say, come as we'll fix this up." As Toya says, "Okay, so I think my arm got dislocated." As Shoto would have said, "Okay, just gotta pop it back in, right?" As Toya would have said, "Yeah, but on the count of three, okay?" As Shoto would have said, "Okay," and as Toya would have said, "One," Taroki immediately just shoved it in there as fast as possible. As Toya would have said, "What the heck are you doing?" I said on three. As he would have said, if we did it on three, you would be tense and it probably wouldn't work. As he would have walked off. As Toya would have looked at his arm and would have felt that it was, you know, back in place as he would have moved it around a little bit. As we get switched away from their story. So, I'm going to leave it off here, guys. Because like, this is like a 50-minute video now. So, basically, um, part two will be mainly, majority of it will be mainly about pretty much, well, Every other Hiyue student's well, story, eventually them coming across the other members of you know, the different stories throughout the story. And basically, it's pretty simple. Um, eventually, near the end of the finale of this What If or this series I'm going to be making, basically, they're going to be in like a huge, like, all out fight against like a swarm of, a swarm of a xenomorphs and basically everything. Like, the secrets of the plot will be revealed in like part three, maybe. And part two will mainly be about, you know, I might kill all some, I might kill all somebody in part two, but yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you like and subscribe, and uh, let me know if you want me to change the story a little bit. Maybe introduce a certain character in this story. So hope you guys enjoyed the video.
like and subscribe and as always guys have a blessed day